Hello and welcome. This is uh, the next episode in our chakra series of chakra healing. And this episode is about chakra six. Hello, I am Margarita Crystal Lotus. I'm a healer, published author, and uh, a life and business mentor who intuitively help professional women with overcoming emotional problems in their relationships and also guide them through their career. And uh, I also have a retreat center in Kingston, Ontario called the Enchanting Enchantment Healing Retreat. And we also do um, a weekly show together with uh, other people uh, on a weekly basis. My website is thecrystallotus.com. And here with me today, I have my co host here, Rosanna Martella. Hi, I'm Rosanna Martella, and I am a sensitive intuitive with 20 years of experience in various alternative healing and various, um, including health and nutritional counseling, energy work, acupressure and shiatsu, release of emotional blockages with EFT and EFC, and distance healing. I also specialize in a strengthening health of the immune system of um, people with gluten intolerance and celiac disease. And I am a published author, and um, I live I live in USA, New Jersey. Okay, so today we're going to talk about the uh, third eye chakra here, and this is getting into the the mental and the thinking and consciousness realm. And I'm very excited to uh, explore this today. So, Rosanna, can you tell us a little bit about what the sixth chakra, sixth chakra is all about and when it starts in the developmental stage? Yes. Um, the sixth chakra, it's, uh, it's a very important chakra. It's located um, right in between. It's like if you make a line between the two high brows, just a little bit above in the center of the, the mind. And it's connected and associated with the pineal gland, which is in the center of our brain, just at the the intersection between the top of your ears to the chakra point here in the back. If you make a cross, you'll know where that gland is. And that gland is a very important gland because it's a photosensitive gland. And that's why the third, the sixth chakra is called the, um, the eye of the mind also. The element of this chakra is light. And in Sanskrit, which is ancient uh, Indian, um, it, it's called the Ajna. And the Ajna means to perceive it to command. So that is the translation of the word Ajna. The developmental stage of this chakra is during the adolescence of a person. Yes. And... Uh what are the tasks, basic rights, uh, and also the demons of this chakra? Okay, the task is, is the establishment of personal identity. And the basic rights is to see. Even if we see with our mind more than we see with our eyes. But we have the need of the sunlight to be able to see. And the demon of this chakra is illusions. Because this chakra is the, the seat of the mental power of um, our intellect and our memory and our will. So it, it, it's, uh, it's, it, it makes us able to see in, in the heart of things. In the, in the unknown parts of ourself and also connects even farther the bottom chakras to the top chakra. So 
it's a very important chakra in a developmental stage of a person because that's when um, all of the chakras energy gets connected and transmuted okay so uh, do you want to deal with your dog there or uh... Uh, it's probably the mailman <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Welcome, mailman. We can see afar with our third eye chakra. <laughs> is, is it true that we see things with this chakra that we don't necessarily can see with our external eyes? Yes, the the third eye chakra. It's um, it's like an internal screen that um, we're the memory, the fantasies, and the image, and also the archetypes, um, and intuition and imagination, they, all, um, they are all intertwined. And, uh, um, you know, with sight, it, it gives us guidance. The sight makes us see things in a certain way. And... Um, and, and this chakra gives us a vision that it's um, it's like a, a creative act of transformation. <clears throat> so the vibration of the chakra is much faster than all the other chakras, and that's that's because it's a, higher, a much higher up, and it's uh, it needs the connection with the bottom chakras especially with the basic chakra but it's um it also it's in the, in the realm of of the the invisible let's say it's that part of us that um that that, that creates meanings that creates um that creates consciousness and and um, and it brings these ideas that we get um, to materialization if we learn how to um, to make it mature to, to this part of our being. So, so I, I wanted to ask you about this internal seeing and what is it for it really? Well, uh, the internal uh, seeing is like, well, Let's say, while well, each chakra has um, has a, 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 a some kind of energy, okay. The bottom three chakras allow us to be um, closer to the earth and 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 to develop um, our material world. The the opening of this six chakra allow us to see the big picture of things and, and it kind of transcends the uh, our ego and and finds deeper meaning in all things so this inner sight has to develop and um and how it develops it puts us into assembled all this information that it gets from the lower chakra in in and it turns it into patterns because um, you know we we act and react with patterns like words are are patterns words are 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 things that the they make us see um, something even if we don't see it with the regular eyes but we do see it with our inner vision. You know, if somebody talk about a pink elephant, our inner vision can imagine a pink elephant. So that's, you know, that's what I'm saying. It's like a pattern. It's pictures. It's, it's, it's things connected to words. So, so this is the, this inner sight it needs to be developed. And, um, and it, it brings us to clarity. It brings us this. Um, it, it, it's, a, it's a consciousness that connects the lower chakra with the upper chakras. So the sixth chakra, it's that part that it, it's got to connect the whole thing. It's like, it's like interlocks all the other chakras, all the chakras together. 
So I'm, I'm having a question there. Isn't it possible that we can get sidetracked by illusions uh, when we interpret the, the world around us according to a sort of a lower way? Uh, can you talk about the illusions? Yes, yes. The illusions makes us see first this, like sometimes we get stuck on something, you know, and maybe something that happens to us and and we want that to be uh, in a certain way. So we get this illusion of how we want that to be. And we we imagine this whole thing and we get stuck on it. And we don't want to acknowledge that things are different than the way we see them in our mind. And so we fight and resist reality the way it is and we get into this big illusion that we hold in our mind and the way it should be and uh, and we we construct things around it. We look at this illusion with details but the problem is that the illusion it it, it kind of it's it, it's got it's an investment of a lot of psychic energy, so it kind of saps us our energy and it and it takes away our strength. So when we're invested in these illusions, we are not doing us a favor. We are only um, repeat this thing over and over again in our mind just the way we want it to be and um, and it doesn't bring us satisfaction so um, it, and that can get into obs obsessions you know there is we get to do this over and over and over again and then we believe that that it's real when in effect it's only an obsession of the way we want things to be done you know and um, and when this and plus when this chakra is removed from the grounding of the first chakra and um, it people with this kind of, of uh, illusion and obsession they're all in their heads so because of the head chakra, it's much more faster vibrating. We we get into our heads too much, and we are not anymore attached with reality and with the grounding that the basic sh chakra and the second chakra and the third chakra can give us. So, the more we invest in this illusion, the harder it becomes to let it go. And so, how do we do that? Because uh, we talked about the demon of the sixth sock chakra. Isn't the demon the illusions that we think is true? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, that's that's basically it is, and it also is because we repeat this thing over and over again in cycles, and so that makes it even more real for us that that's the way things should go. That's not the way should uh, you know they should be, and yeah. so. We imagine this in details. We have this whole big fantasy, you know, on how things should be, and it's not, you know. And and we, the whole thing is acceptance. I feel like that if when we accept that, just things that are, there are things that we cannot change, and let them go. When we let them go, then we can live our daily life one day at a time <laughs> without worrying too much of what. You know, there is only certain things that we can change. Then there is other things that we cannot change. It's out of our hands, so we cannot, spout, you know, go crazy over it. Well, that's that's really valuable to know about that. Uh, there are things that we can actually change for ourselves. We can change our view of a thing, but we can't really change how three houses are going to move to the other side of the street right off the bat. <laughs> but in my dream, I could do it, right? So yeah. what are dreams? Uh, well, to I want to talk a little bit more about the symbols because this is what the chakra, this chakra does. This chakra enters the symbolic realm and, you know, our, our, 
uh, what I was saying before, the language, it's made of symbols and sounds. The sounds are made out of letters, and the letters represent sounds. The sounds can make symbols. So, um, in our fantasies and dreams, we, we wear jewelry that represents certain type of symbols for us, or we, we scribble on notebooks little designs that they're connected to these archetype things that they're, you know, this representation of these powerful archetypes that they are, that um, it, it, they are coming up from our unconscious mind. And, um, and these archetypes are the deposit of all the human experience right back to the remote beginnings. So all of this, this communication that we have with these images that they come up from our soul, from our, from our beginning, uh, they all get connected in, and, and, and expressed in symbols in our sixth chakra. Yeah, that's very so, important to know that we can actually uh, uh, have a view of ourselves by being in our sixth chakra and balancing it, right? So, I mean, I, it's very valuable what you say about the symbols because we create symbols all through our life. We imagine something that's like that and then we use that as a symbol. And then we go back to that and support other argument in our head and some of them are good, right? And some of them are outright not at all true. It's actually even harmful. So I, I wanted to ask you about when it comes to your mind and the third chakras, when it comes to some of these abusive issues that we can actually... Well, what about, well, first of all, let's go to the, the dreams. Uh, because the dream world is made of symbols. Actually, it's what it connects our daily life to the symbols of, 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 our, of our inner world. And dreams are the most potent source of symbols. And they link the consciousness and the unconscious mind. And uh, dreams speak to us. But they speak to us in a in a different language that we're used to in a daily life, and uh, and they kind of connect. They make a connection between the feelings and the impulses of the world and the spirit. So, mm -hmm. so in order to have vision and imagination and clairvoyance and insights, we need to be able to think in a new creative way. And it's the, it's the dreams that makes us, brings us into a new different place that has, it, it, it's not, it's, it's um, materialistic, it's not as, uh, it's cut and dry, and, 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 and it's not that, that much solid. It's more a, um, you know, it's why we, we call it a dream world. It's a, it's, a, it's a new way of feelings that they come up from our subconscious that it, it teaches us also. Because if we have a problem that sometimes we cannot solve in our waking mind, but we can solve it through a dream. Like I had times that I had uh, dreams that they, you know, by the morning when I really finally got to realize that what I had dreamed and I connected it to my problem, I was able to solve the problem just by looking at those symbols and those stories that I got through my dreams. And dreams can be really off the completely off of what you can imagine. I, I had dreams that they were like romances. I, I did for seven years, for seven months, not seven years. For seven years, I wrote all my dreams. And we dreamed three times per night. 
one is around three o'clock in the morning, the other time is around five, and then right before we wake up, there is the third dream. And if we learn how to recall these dreams, it's very important because we recall the dreams with the sixth chakra. So when we develop the sixth chakra to a much more mature point, place then we are able to recall the dreams and so when I wrote all these dreams for you know I have a nice book with all my dreams for seven months and I realized that some dreams I could understand because I, they had a, a story behind and some dreams were completely off and I couldn't understand what the heck they meant but I felt the feelings so the feelings that come up also give me some clue on how to resolve some of my my stuff throughout the day. So I uh, here I want to ask this thing about vision. Uh, like how is vision the visions we can have and the dreams are they related? You know, like we have a vision of something, we get like a daydream and then the dreams of the night. Is that the same well, thing? I feel like the dreams of the night, they're more... Um, they're, they're much more alternative to an ordinary type of reality because they're irrational images. They're not rational things most of the time. And then... Uh, uh, they kind of, it's something larger. It, it brings us to, to the super conscious. So it's like, I feel like that within my dreams, I can go to that part of me that it's out there into space. And the super conscious mind, what Jung, you, Carl Gustav Jung used to call it the super conscious, the sixth chakra. Because that's what it is. It's like it's that part that connects you to the divine. So you, I feel like that through the dreams you can go and connect to that. They call it the. It's almost like a library with all the that it happens in the world, and you can go into this library and figure out your things. Um, in this life, at this moment, you know. So that's what I feel like. It's it's my soul that is connecting me to the divine, that it gives me hints on how to, um, to resolve my daily life problems. And so it's that part of the conscious mind that I cannot solve these things. And, um, and the dreams are our powerful spiritual teachers to us. And um, I agree with that for sure. Uh, now, when I ask you about the vision, can it be different kind of visions? Yeah, I think have so. A lucid vision or a vision of some kind of gloom and doom, right? Right. Well, and I feel like some of the dreams that are very scary, you know, like that they're um, they're like nightmare that they wake you up and you're you got the heart pounding and it is something in your real life that it's scaring you that it and you and you oppress it you push it away you put it into that shadow that we talked about in the second and third chakra and we don't want to deal with it it's when then there that kind of emotion has to come out some way for you to be healthy so it's through the dream that you go through that emotional affair or whatever it is that it gets released it kind of uh, connects us to that part of us that has to learn how to deal with this daily life that it's not exactly every day easy and um, and and so that's a one way of balancing the inner world to the outer world yeah, that makes sense, totally, I think so. Uh, from those emotions that they're, you know, buried in our subconscious, that they need to escape in some way or another. If not, we're going to get sick. Yeah. Like, so, we're talking about the, the, uh, the symbolic world, and then we have now talked about dreams. Hmm. What about clairvoyance? 
yeah, that is another beautiful thing. Um, and that's another thing that we need to develop. I mean, everybody can develop clairvoyance. Um, all right, what clairvoyance means, it's a French word that it means clear seeing. Now, we're talking about the chakra and the aura. Now, when a person is clear seeing and is looking at another person, if it, it wants to see that other person, has to kind of forget of the physical body and look on the outer skirt of that person to really see those thrills of energy that they're going around that person. So that is very important for learning to develop clairvoyance because you got to kind of know that what you're doing, it's, it's uh, observing energy in its pure state. You're not absorbing the energy in a solid state, but in more ethereal state. And it's there. And it's all there. And it's important to, um, to, to let go of this idea that everything is solid and there is nothing else. That, you know, most people believe because there is so much more that we don't see with our eyes. That So the development of 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 this intuition of 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 um, how, how to learn and focus on this uh, uh, you know our ten our attention long enough on something it start like we got to start with meditation because by meditating then we are able to develop this new sight of of observing the energy field of a of a person or even of a thing you know even a rock has its own energy field it's a little bit more dense but everything has energy around it so once we find our own light and our own, and we are able to focus enough on this on this ethereal body of ours then we are able to see things in a different way and that is what clairvoyant a clairvoyance does. And well, so hold we on, can do that. Hold it's, on, like clairvoyance, it's sort of often com uh, con connected with uh, psychic ability and and foretelling the future and something like fortune telling. Can you address that a little bit as well? With fortune telling. Yeah, like as somebody who is psychic, they are clairvoyant, and uh, what has that to do with the sixth chakra? Well, uh, there is people that they naturally become clairvoyant very fast because they have their upper chakra very developed, so they are able without doing too much work to be able to to see the future because what it is clairvoyant is to go in within the chakras of another person and to see the past the present and the future of that person so if if the the clairvoyant it's it's uh, very sensitive to um that part of of of, of life then that person it's able to be a very good clairvoyant and it's you know it's it's able to see within the the the, the hidden things about another but then there is people that they have to work very hard to get to a certain point to even start to begin to see the chakras i mean i see the chakras sometime in my my own way but i i feel them more than seeing them. So I haven't developed enough this this uh, sight that um, some pe for some people come very, very easy. Yeah, I, I had this take on the psychic abilities more from the solar plexus chakra, right? Uh, it's just more a little bit scientific. This seeing energy forms where intuition 
part of it is more like from a feeling state. So that's much more detail and, and perhaps even more evolved uh, to have intuition rather than just psychic ability. Because there are psychics that they they use that for ill purposes, let's say. Oh, yes. Definitely. So that's uh, something to be paying attention to that if somebody is psychic, let's say, or clairvoyant, it doesn't necessarily mean that they are spiritually evolved. For yeah. that, you need the, 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 the heart energies to come in, right? So that, that it's all connected. Do you agree with that? Yes, yes, I agree with that. And so next question we have is about the traumas and uh, what, uh, for example, like abuse. Uh, can you talk about that? Uh, yeah, the trauma and the abuses are directly linked to what we feel, what we think, and what we express. Just let's think of this life as like a library where we store all these images and these images are linked to our experiences. Now, if the experiences and these, these things, these images are full of negative experiences, we consciously transfer parts of this library. We don't want to go in there. So, because it's full of negative stuff. So, if these memories are unpleasant, the, there is a two ways of, of avoiding these feelings. And one is to repress the memory, and the other is to dissociate from it. So, in repressing the memory, we close down the ability to perceive, and do, we don't even see those things, certain things. Well, in the disassociating, it's we inhibits our ability to make sense of these images. And so we strip them down of their meaning. You know, we say, oh, well, that doesn't mean anything. Oh, you mean that you can let go of the, the yeah, heart? There is people yeah. that just, just close it off and say, well, that. I don't care about it, you know, and even it, it, it is, it is actually a sense of, of, um, of protecting yourself because if, if that hurts so much that you can't even look at it, you know, you don't want to go there. You don't want to even be aware of that, that happened to you, you know, like just think of a child that had been sexually abused for years and years and years. Yeah. I've known somebody that's been abused for more than one man in the family. You know, it's like, how the heck you want to go there? As you're growing up and you're starting to understand that these people that loved you, or they said that they loved you, they were using you. And you were too little to even talk about it. You know, so, so this is something that, so this repression and this, this association, it's what it's, it's a meaning to, uh, of, um, of, of our mind and our being to be able to just forget them. And uh, that's why most people, you know, I know some people that they were abused when they were very little and they didn't remember anything until, you know, and they were in their 40s and all of the sun, they woke up one morning and they figured out, my God, this is something wrong with me here and I, they don't know what it is and they end up you know, in a psychiatrist's office. Because there is all this, I guess, from the subconscious mind, the dreams are bringing up all these old things that they have to leave, <laughs> you know. So that's what happens to, you know. So if this environment of the daily life, it's made of suffering, uh, we, close the, we close down our sixth chakra. We don't want to see those images and those symbols and those, you know, and it's, 
we don't want to see them with our physical, our psychic, and 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 in our physical eyes also. So, and children are naturally sensitive to. Um, uh, because they have intuition. You see, most most growing up don't think kids know anything, but children have very strong intuition because they're open. Their chakras are open, so they can be intuitive. I remember I was intuitive until my mother one time said to me that whatever I thought was completely off the rack, and. I agreed with her because she was bigger than me and she knew she was my mom. She knew more than me. So I shut down that part of me. I was in my 40s when my intuition all of a sudden just popped out after I, I, you know, I was doing meditation and I was eating macrobiotic food and I was healing myself and I was cleansing my body and I was doing all these new things that I'm talking about today that all of a sudden, poof, my intuition became so strong that it's like, wow. So then I started remembering when did I shut this down because I had this all my life. And then I remembered the specific day when I was seeing it and my mother didn't see it. And so she told me that that was not true and I closed it down because I believed her. I believed that she knew more than me. So children do that a lot too, and 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 that it's the results of uh, of them do not develop much of their of their their gifts. Because if I were had developed my gift since I was like seven, eight, ten years old, whenever that problem happened, I would be now probably much more advanced than I am right now. Maybe not. Who knows? You know, Another thing. I, you know what? I think that. We have a life path, and and we're going to meet the challenges that we have, right? So, to think what you just say is like, I I don't think it is like that personally. Even though we may have a lot of different challenges, right? But I think that spirit gives us the challenges we need to learn in order to actually evolve as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't you agree with me there? I mean, yes. even if we had these abuses, we had these things, we need to go through them. And I want to know from you what actually defines uh, an excessive or an, a balanced uh, sixth chakra. I want to talk about shame first. Mm -hmm. Because shame is another... Mommy, please, would you please let me be for now? Right. I have to finish this now. <laughs> yeah. Shame, well, shame. we'll all get interrupted and, at some time. First is the mailman and the dog, and then everybody else. So that's normal. So come back here. So shame produces intensive self scrutiny. When we feel shamed, we go inside of us and we are making sure that everything is perfect all the time. And as a result, we always look inward, and it's like a paralyzing cycle of self-monitoring ourselves to make sure that we didn't do anything to, to look bad or to do something that it could hurt somebody or can, or can yeah. other people think of us that we're incompetent or whatever it is that it makes us sh feeling shameful. So, um, there is some noise like, there, oh. uh, Usana. Yeah. There some echo there. I don't know what's the echo. I haven't touched the computer. Yeah. Maybe it's just in the background. Continue. So, um, so we're always looking words. We always look to make sure that everything is, is okay, but this blocks uh, the information of, that comes up from the, the, the chakras, the bottom chakras up to the sixth chakra. So, and if we're severely shamed, um, we cannot look other people in the eyes because we feel like, you know, they say the eye is the, the, the window of the soul. So 
we if we can if we feel shame we don't want other people to see how shameful we feel inside and how in, inadequate we are inside so so we close this this window of the soul we don't let people we always look somewhere else we never look somebody straight in the eye so that's another thing to see if you're trying to help somebody if the person cannot look at you in the eyes it's because it's got some deeper problems there mm. okay mm. so so that's the other um, aspect of, of um, of this problem and then there is you know with our the excess and the deficiency of this chakra that there they can be looked into and and like if a chakra is deficient it gives a person uh, poor into intuitive abilities of course and uh, uh, and so the person tends to 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 get more into rational stuff thoughts and don't want to go into the, the 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 movement of the insides of of our chakra that it brings all this um, light energy all this energy that it's in symbols and other stuff for them it's like it's it doesn't have any reason to be because they're more into the solid uh, material world so the memory of this person is generally very weak and maybe in, 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 and that could be that the, the, the sixth chakra is completely closed because of uh, no recall of, of, of these symbols and these, and these things. And, um, and so um, we kind of uh, are not using the sixth chakra to uh, to the the full extent because it's got no energy. They have to people like this have difficulties to visualizations, and and they don't use too much their imagination also. So, and it's also very difficult for them to, to remember their dreams, because you have to be focused. Um, you know, like to, in order to remember your dreams, if you put in your mind right before you go to sleep that you're going to remember your dreams after you for after a few nights you're going to start remembering some of your dreams especially the less dream that you do before you wake up and if you don't move while you're still half asleep and half and starting to feel awake that's when you can go back to the dream and remember it so um so that's that's another thing that the person doesn't remember the dreams, um, or maybe the the person is using too much the sixth chakra during the day, so at night um, the chakra doesn't have enough energy to really do too much dreaming. Mm. You know that could be another another reason. Um, Rosanna, to to really get on top of the sixth chakra and and heal it. What is the first thing that we have to actually do? Meditation. Learn to be focused on one thing. That's the first the first thing because you know our mind is continuously going. So we have to learn to focus our mind on one specific thing. And keep it there and quiet the mind because it's when we quiet the mind that we can access these these lower um, inner thoughts and these these in these these symbols and these things that they come from the subconscious and it only when we focus the mind we can really understand what's going on and so and then we can develop our dreams that's another important thing is the to remember how and learn how to dream and you know and how do you get to the dream um, recollection recollection you can keep a, a, a paper and pen on top of your night table 
And then when you remember a dream, just write it down as soon as you wake up. Because after a few minutes, you can be completely forgotten the dream. So um, I've noticed that when I have a very important dream that it really it, it brings me to some important details that I'll never forget them. I have dreams that I did probably around 20 years ago that I never forgot the dream. Yeah. But there are dreams that they're so flaky, so airy, you know, that we we feel them for a few minutes and then they just poof, they go away. So it's important to learn how to dream and it's also important to study mythology because in mythology we learn about all these stories of the goddesses and the gods and and the ancient uh, archetypal figures that um, that have arranged themselves in a the human consciousness and that develops our creativity because it's through creativity and letting go of the fear of not being adequate and not being real that that it will make us um, be more creative and and be able to access that part of the mind that it's out there in the ether you know I and remember then, when I was a teenager, I was reading mythology book, you know, like the Greek gods and the. Uh -huh. know, I the, love to see movies with that. Yeah, and then the Norse gods with Thor and the hammer, because I'm Swedish, right? So we have that mythology. Right. Here. And it's like stories about ourselves, isn't it? Yes, yes. And plus, we can, because it develops our, our creativity we can make more creations, more embellished creations in our mind and and then we can put them down in artwork. Um, we can create art and uh, making art is very important too to develop the sixth chakra because we're using color, we use scenes and we're using figures or whatever we're, we're doing. It's good to begin maybe to design wheels of chakras and then starts to make the colors of the chakras. I have a color wheel here. Can you see this? Yeah. And it's, here it's like the first chakra and then you see the colors how they go up until the violet that is the seventh chakra. So you can start using making wheels of color. Um, ah, wait, I made a, I made a, a little design I can find it now <laughs> yeah I mean this is so far quite interesting to see that from from the root chakra yeah here you yeah. have the see all the twirls and the chakras they turn in one direction and then the up the chakra on top it turns on the other direction and they go like this all the way up and it, it makes like figure eights. The energy, this is the energy of the chakras going up, the way the 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 Sanskrit sees it. And then hold the colors as it going up. So the more dense color is the red of the basic chakra and the more light color is the violets and the and the indigo of the six and seven chakra. Six, it's the sixth chakra color is indigo, and the, the top chakra it's violet. So those are the most highest color, and then it's this is where I, you access consciousness is only seventh chakra. So the sixth chakra is preparing all these symbols and all these things for you to access the seventh chakra, that it really brings you to the to the accomplishment of what what it's you're here for, you know. So 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 you can start painting or you can also use it use like collages. You can go on magazines and you can start uh cutting out things that you like and color things in the magazine and then and then um be able to um to glue them on a board. And you know you can add anything you want, 
and or you can make mandalas. The mandalas are extremely interesting um, things because as you make a mandala, you can be meditating on that mandala. But also, when you're finished the mandala, the mandala it's a circle with a center, and where from the center everything comes out. So this circle, you can put it in front of you and then look at the mandala and meditate. So that is another very good can thing. I, can I show a little little dream board that I started a while back? Yeah. It's like this. Can you see it? Yes, yes, yes. I, I visualize myself here as a fountain of joy and here is the published author. I am a published author and flowers and and well-being all over yeah. the place yeah. and transformation. I mean, it's just a little index card, right? I yeah. have it here yeah. on my computer. I make big things. <laughs> I make real big things when I get into this idea. Plus, I always liked mandalas. I have some real. I made some gigantic mandalas that, uh, and I love round things. So what I do is I buy a big piece of wood. And then I curve it, and then I stretch canvas over it, and it's all round or oval. And then I make the design in it. And you know, sometimes it's only geometrical designs. Sometimes it's I put a figure in the middle, and then the geometrical designs around it. So, but that's me, you know. But anybody can do art. It doesn't. It doesn't have to be a person that went to school for art. Yeah. Art. Art is a personal thing, and in this case, we're trying to do art that it awakens and matures the, the sixth chakra. So that is a very important thing. And then another very important thing is to do visualization, because the visualization will help us to develop psych psychic abilities. Yeah. And, you know, we can visualize starting simple things, and then make more you know with practice we we can on a regular basis we can can get better and better at this and creative visualization it's like um it's like magic it's uh, it likes it, it connects us to the universe to 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 manifest things um and the other thing that is important is to have a um an aim to something that we want to achieve. That is a beautiful mandala. Yeah, I wanted to show you this uh, this picture here. It's a, uh, a sand mandala that, you know, Buddhists do sand mandalas. They put yes. sand with a different color. So I just had this picture from my live training yesterday. And yeah. so I just wanted to show you that. Yeah. And that's why I'm saying this visualizations are important to do if we want to develop the sixth chakra. And, um, and, and we need to think in a creative way and, uh, you know, up to the smallest details. Some of the Buddhist monks, they make those mandalas with rice and color, different color rice. And then when they finish it, they destroy it. And they start yeah. with the mandala because as they do the mandala, they're meditating. Well, I like to do the mandala and meditate, and then I like to put it on my wall and meditate while I look at the mandala. I don't have to destroy it. I prefer to prever preserve it for a while, you know, or even sell it to somebody. <laughs> well, the idea of, of collecting back the sand is that we're going to let go of our attachment and put it in the river. I know, I know, I know. But anyway, let's get to the end of this. There is yeah, one important the factor. End. One important factor is light. Light is so important for us. One, because it allows us to make vitamin D, that it keeps us healthy. And lately, with the ozone layer getting destroyed, we get burned if we get in the sun. And the fact that we're always indoors, we don't get enough light indoor in our in our be in our bodies. So that is linked to depression, is linked to cancer, is linked to illness of any kind. It's it's why they're saying it's like a pro Prozac is going rampant because people 
are not getting enough sun exposure. And because of not, not enough sun exposure, they get depressed and they get all these illnesses that then they're t attending to cure with medicine, but medicine doesn't really help. You see, the, the pineal glands, it's a very important photosynthesis gland that makes an hormone that is called melatonin. Melatonin, it regulates our bodies. And because of that, we need to have enough melatonin even to go to sleep at night. That's why when we go to sleep at night and we shut the light off, we don't fall asleep immediately because it takes a while for us to be in the darkness and the, the pineal glands, it's what it makes us go to sleep in the darkness. And those, okay, it's time to go to sleep. It says to that and we fall asleep. But now that we have all the electrical lights, we stay up late at night until 3 o'clock in the morning and maybe we go to sleep that is almost sun up. And, and all of this, it has completely took off that regularity that our body needs to be in in order to keep us healthy. And so that, it's a very important thing. We need to be in the sunlight. And it also, if we're in the north hemisphere, we don't get enough sunlight. Most of the year, we can't go outside with a bikini and, and get on the, in the sun. We can only do that for three or four months, not even no four, four months. So it, the vitamin D... Um, you know, it's it's the sunlight that it gets in our skin, and it's our skin and our body that turns that sunlight in this vitamin D. That it's very very important to keep us uh, to keep us healthy. So that also is another problem that we have. And then I also heard of another thing that there is people now in children that they're born with crystals in the pineal gland. Remember the pineal gland? It's a gland that is in the center of our body. Now, it's almost like a little pine cone, really tiny pine cone, the pineal gland. And if it is a, um, and in, if it makes pictures, if we, if we can see pictures inside of our mind with, just by listening to a word, remember the pink elephant? So that pineal gland has got crystals just like our eyes, physical eyes have crystals to see things so now that these kids are in these and even some adults they have these crystals the doctors are saying this is an abnormality and it's not good but it's not true that is our next step of evolution we are going to start to use that pineal gland to the full extent that it was supposed to be there for and that is to materialize things to see things behind the scene with our own eyes so this pineal gland and this chakra are into the most incredible mode of evolution right now with all the changes that are going on in the world and all the super information that we have we're getting stimulated even more to imagine and see things that we were seeing before mm -hmm. so this is another very important thing of the sixth chakra that I know. Okay, so we are nearing the end of this episode, yes. and uh, thank you so much for being here. And uh, we're going to come back uh, in the next episode, and that will be on the crown chakra. Yes, and we're going to do that in a couple of weeks. Okay. Okay? It thank was wonderful you. to see you. Goodbye.